The Mad Bomber, the story of George Metesky. In the 1940s and 1950s, the city of New York was gripped by fear as a series of explosive devices rocked its streets. Panic spread as innocent people became victims of an unknown assailant dubbed the Mad Bomber. Little did they know that the perpetrator was George Metesky, a former Consolidated Edison employee with a vendetta against the company. A Troubled Past The story begins with George Metesky's troubled past. We explore his early life, highlighting the hardships he faced, the grievances he held against Consolidated Edison, and the catalyst that set him on a path of vengeance. George Metesky's troubled past shaped the path that led him to become the notorious Mad Bomber. Born in 1903, George grew up in Waterbury, Connecticut, in a household plagued by poverty and hardship. His childhood was marked by a series of unfortunate events that would later fuel his anger and resentment. From an early age, George faced numerous health issues, including a chronic lung condition caused by tuberculosis. This ailment prevented him from enlisting in the military during World War II, leaving him bitter and disillusioned. His dream of serving his country shattered. George developed a deep-seated resentment toward authority figures and institutions. Following his failed military aspirations, George found employment as a skilled mechanic at Consolidated Edison, a major utility company in New York City. Initially, he was proud to work for the company, believing it would provide him with stability and a sense of purpose. However, his outlook quickly soured as he encountered a series of workplace accidents and perceived injustices. A pivotal moment in George's life occurred when he suffered a severe injury on the job, which left him permanently disabled and unable to work. Frustrated by the lack of support and compensation from Consolidated Edison, George's anger festered and he developed a deep grudge against the company. With his health deteriorating and consumed by bitterness, George turned to writing letters expressing his grievances. These letters, filled with threats and ominous warnings, were sent to various media outlets and government agencies, including Consolidated Edison. He adopted the persona of the Mad Bomber to strike fear into the hearts of those he believed had wronged him. The Reign of Terror as the bombings escalate, law enforcement and the public struggle to make sense of the chaos. We witness the impact of the bombings on the city, the fear that grips its residents, and the tireless efforts of investigators to catch the elusive mad bomber. George Metesky's reign of terror begins as he embarks on a series of bombings that grip the city of New York in fear. Act Two delves into the chaotic and unsettling period when the mad bomber's attacks intensify leaving the public and authorities on edge. The first bomb explodes in November 1940 at Consolidated Edison's headquarters, causing widespread panic and confusion. The blast serves as a chilling warning of the mayhem to come. As news of the bombing spreads, the city becomes increasingly apprehensive, unsure of when and where the mad bomber will strike next. In the following months and years, Metesky strategically targets various locations associated with Consolidated Edison including power plants, substations, and public areas. Each bombing is meticulously planned, with Metesky leaving behind carefully crafted explosive devices that create chaos and havoc upon detonation. The public's fear escalates as the mad bomber remains at large, eluding capture. Residents of New York become suspicious of every package in public space, heightening tensions and increasing the urgency to catch the perpetrator. The media frenzy surrounding the bombings further fuels the atmosphere of unease and uncertainty. During this time, law enforcement agencies, including the New York City Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation, tirelessly investigate the bombings. They analyze bomb fragments, examine witness testimonies, and search for any leads that could help identify the elusive mad bomber. Despite their best efforts, the authorities struggle to make progress as the bomber skillfully evades detection. The city becomes a battleground between fear and resilience as the mad bomber's reign of terror continues. Each explosion leaves a lasting impact on the collective psyche of the city's residents, heightening their anxiety and vulnerability. The media closely follows the developments, amplifying the sense of dread and urgency to bring the mad bomber to justice. The investigation unfolds. 
Determined detectives meticulously pieced together the evidence, examining crime scenes and analyzing the bombs to find a breakthrough. We delve into the challenges they face, the false leads that misdirect their efforts, and the pressure to bring the mad bomber to justice. Detectives and agents from the New York City Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation join forces to unravel the mystery. They meticulously comb through the crime scenes, studying bomb fragments, residue, and any other evidence that could provide crucial insights into the mad bomber's identity and motives. The investigation leads them to examine George Metesky's troubled past, shedding light on his grievances and potential motivations. They delve into his employment history at Consolidated Edison, seeking connections between his grievances and the targets of the bombings. Interviews with Metesky's acquaintances and co-workers provide valuable leads, painting a clearer picture of his mindset and potential patterns of behavior. As the investigation progresses, investigators uncover a series of handwritten letters sent by the mad bomber. These letters, filled with detailed rants and grievances, become key pieces of evidence in building a psychological profile of the perpetrator. Experts in forensic linguistics analyze the letters, looking for linguistic patterns, handwriting traits, and any other distinctive features that could point to the identity of the mad bomber. The investigation faces numerous obstacles, false leads, and dead ends, adding to the frustration and pressure to bring the mad bomber to justice. Detectives tirelessly sift through mountains of evidence, conduct stakeouts, and collaborate with other law enforcement agencies determined to crack the case. As the investigation unfolds, the media plays a significant role in raising public awareness and soliciting tips from the community. The news outlets publish articles and broadcast updates, urging citizens to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activities or information that could aid the investigation. Gradually, the investigators start to connect the dots, identifying patterns and narrowing down the pool of suspects. Finally, their tireless efforts and dedication pay off when they zero in on George Metesky as the prime suspect. The realization that the mad bomber might be someone with an intimate knowledge of Consolidated Edison's operations sends shockwaves through the investigation team, unmasking the mad bomber. After years of investigation, a breakthrough occurs. The detectives uncover crucial information leading them to George Metesky. We follow their efforts to apprehend him and the tension that builds as they close in on the Mad Bomber's hideout. After months of intense investigation and gathering evidence, law enforcement agencies compile a compelling case against George Metesky. They meticulously connect the dots between the bombings, Metesky's personal history, and his deep-seated grievances against Consolidated Edison. With a solid case built against him, the investigators obtain search warrants for Metesky's residence and meticulously execute the operation. They discover a hidden cache of bomb-making materials, detailed plans, and other incriminating evidence that directly link Metesky to the bombings. The media eagerly reports the breakthrough, and the public becomes aware of the imminent unmasking of the mad bomber. The news of Metesky's identity shocks the city, and citizens are both relieved and disturbed to learn that the perpetrator had been among them hiding in plain sight. The law enforcement agencies swiftly move to apprehend Metesky. A team of skilled officers coordinates a carefully planned arrest operation, ensuring the safety of both the public and the suspect. Metesky is taken into custody without incident, ending his reign of terror. News outlets capture the dramatic arrest, and images of George Metesky's face flash across television screens and newspaper headlines. The public's fascination with the Mad Bomber intensifies as they eagerly consume the details of his capture and the unraveling of his motive. Metesky's trial becomes a media spectacle, drawing widespread attention from the public and legal experts alike. The prosecution presents a compelling case, highlighting the devastation. Ultimately, the jury delivers a verdict, holding George Metesky accountable for his crimes. He is found guilty and sentenced to a lengthy prison term, the city breathes a collective sigh of relief, knowing that the mad bomber has been brought to justice. The trial and aftermath. Metesky's arrest leads to a high-profile trial where the truth behind his actions is revealed. The courtroom drama unfolds as prosecutors present their case and Metesky's motives are laid bare. The video concludes with the aftermath of the trial, 
exploring the impact of the Mad Bomber's reign of terror on the city and the lasting legacy of George Metesky's actions. The trial begins with intense media coverage, drawing significant public interest. The courtroom is filled with spectators eager to witness the proceedings and see justice served. The prosecution presents a compelling case, meticulously outlining the evidence linking Metesky to the bombings and emphasizing the devastating consequences of his actions. During the trial, the victims of the bombings bravely share their harrowing experiences, providing emotional testimonies that elicit empathy from the jury and the public. Their stories paint a vivid picture of the fear, trauma, and long-lasting effects caused by the Mad Bomber's reign of terror. The defense team employs various strategies, focusing on Metesky's troubled past, mental health struggles, and grievances against Consolidated Edison. They argue that Metesky's actions were driven by a combination of personal grievances and psychological issues, seeking to elicit sympathy and potentially mitigate his sentence. The trial unfolds with intense cross-examinations, expert witness testimonies, and gripping courtroom drama. The jury diligently weighs the evidence and arguments presented by both sides, carefully deliberating Metesky's guilt or innocence. Ultimately, the jury delivers its verdict holding George Metesky responsible for the bombings and finding him guilty on multiple counts. The judge pronounces a lengthy prison sentence, ensuring that Metesky will pay for his crimes and removing him from society. The aftermath of the trial brings a mix of emotions. The victims find solace and closure in knowing that justice has been served, even though the scars from the bombings may never fully heal. The public reflects on the impact of the Mad Bomber's reign of terror and expresses relief that the city can now move forward, free from the constant threat. The trial of George Metesky also leaves a lasting impact on the justice system. It serves as a case study for law enforcement agencies and legal professionals, shaping strategies for investigating and prosecuting complex criminal cases. Lessons learned from the Mad Bomber's trial contribute to advancements in forensic techniques, psychological profiling, and public safety protocols.